North Korea and South Korea both fired missiles into waters off each other's coasts as tensions in the region rise further. The North launched at least 23 missiles, which the South describes as a territorial invasion. One of them landed less than 60 kilometers off South Korea's coast. The South Korean military fired three air-to-ground missiles in response. This all just hours after Pyongyang had demanded that joint drills by the US and South Korea end. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un sees the drills as a threat and has vowed consequences, warning that both countries could pay the most horrible price in history. North Korea has repeatedly called its missile launches countermeasures. Japan has been a vocal critic of the latest developments. North Korea has been repeatedly firing missiles at an unprecedented pace and it's absolutely impermissible. In regard to further details, we will receive information later. Washington and Seoul began one of their largest combined military air drills on Monday. Hundreds of warplanes from both sides staged mock attacks for 24 hours a day. North Korea has test-fired a record number of missiles this year. Well, for more on this, we can talk to Dr. Robert Edwin Kelly, American political analyst on inter-Korean affairs at Busan National University, and he joins us live from Busan, South Korea. Doctor, thank you very much indeed for being with us. How should we interpret this exchange of missiles? Sure. So the North Koreans have been testing a lot this year. I think it fits into that larger pattern of the sort of run up of, of tests. I think that in general is because the larger sort of medium term reason is that negotiations between North Korea and South Korea and the U.S. has basically uh, those negotiations have basically broken down. Donald Trump has left office on um, the South Korean president is more hawkish than his predecessor. And so I think that's why you're getting these general series of tests. And that's what today's is a part of. I think what's really noticeable, though, about today's test, I think what's garnered so much attention is the one missile that actually strayed over the border and, and landed in South Korean territorial waters, hence the tough statement by the South Korean president. And do we think that was intentional? Yeah, I don't know. I've actually been reading a fair amount about that all day, and I'm sort of up in the air on that. On the one hand, it's actually fairly far off to have been a missed shot, to have been sort of a, 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 a false a false positive. On the other hand, if they're going to do that, if they're going to sort of provoke the South Koreans, I think there might have been a much greater effort to do so. For example, you know, so apparently it was in this batch of sort of 10 missiles that were shot. Again, we're waiting for sort of details to come in. But, you know, why did the other nine go in the appropriate direction this one went off? I mean, it's a little bit strange. It's hard to know. I mean, the one thing that's important, though, I guess, you know, we're not entirely sure, but the larger the larger point, I think, is that North Korea is rather reckless in respecting the sovereignty of the states around it. This is something akin to North Korea's shot over Japan of a missile test about a month ago, you may recall that. Um, North Korea has engaged in terrorism, things like that, and sort of drug running. I mean, North Korea just doesn't have a good record of respecting the territorial you know, and, and physical integrity uh, concerns of the states around it. And this is a nice example of that behavior yet again.